Hello and welcome to my guide on how to get rich quick on Albin Online. After the success of my last video which has now over 230,000 views, I thought it would be a good idea to redo the guide since the largest Albin Online update we've seen, which is Queen, hit the game in January of 2020. This update changed the layout of the Outlands, aka the Black Zones in which my original video was based out of. So all the maps were, are wrong and the layout is as well. Also some of the things have changed in ways of which we made money. So I wanted to bring you guys an updated version of the guide. During this video I'll be starting off with a brand new account as you can see in the background. And I'll be showing you tips and tricks on how to get rich. Also every month I'll be giving away one month of premium to a random person that comments on the video, likes the video and subscribes. So let's get into it. As you can see in the background, I currently have gear set up for a brand new account. I went fire as you will see it's very useful and what I plan to do in the next clip. But one thing a lot of new players seem to miss out on is during Tutorial Island, you can buy up to four donkeys for three silver each and bring them with you to the main game. Now, once you get to the main game, you'll see in this video, I take them to the main city um, of which we're going to be playing out of and you can sell each donkey for between 5,000 and 8,000 silver each. Now, when you come to the end of Tutorial Island, you want to choose Mountain Cross as your starting area um, if you're following in my footsteps and you will want to complete the little quest here that gives you access to your three days of premium. Premium is a very useful thing in this game that lets you get ahead a lot quicker um, and you, optimizing the three days is key when you're first starting off um, as it boosts fame, silver, so um, as we move out of the starting zone here we're going to head towards uh, the Fort Sterling area and as you can see as we open up the map using the M button on your keyboard you'll see we'll move across to the southwest here. So as we zone into Fort Sterling here, uh, the first thing we want to do is you want to familiarize yourself with the layout of the city. Um, you can press N on your keyboard that brings up the local minimap for the area as you can see and you can zoom, zoom in using the scroll wheel. We have the bank, the marketplace, the repair station and also the realm gate. Uh, those are the key important locations that you want to know as a new player and we're going to head straight into the marketplace and sell our donkeys for some quick silver straight off to Toro Island. Uh, we're going to split the stack so we're going to keep one ride one and sell two for the time being here and you have two options uh, when you're selling on the marketplace you can insta sell something to um, a player's buy order or you can set up a sell order which normally allows you to get more for your items but it takes a little bit more time to sell so we're going to set up the sell orders for the donkey the donkey's up for sale and we're going to move into the bank and store our spare donkey and our tools as we don't need them if you die anything that's inside of your bank in a city or anywhere else in the game you do not lose which is nice so now we're going to head out into the outlands and as you can see, we just got a mail saying one of our donkeys have indeed sold. So we just made ourselves 8,000 plus silver on that one sale, which is massive for any new player. Uh, we're going to head down into the realm gate area. Um, this has an option of three different portals you can use to the outlands. And we're going to be using the north portal today in this video. So let's zone out. A word of the wise. You are in the Outlands, aka the Black Zones. If you die here, you lose everything that you are wearing and is in your inventory. The only things that you do not lose is the gold and silver on your account and anything that's stored in a safe space in the cities, aka your banks and chests. So keep that in mind. And we are going to pop our three days of premium now, which gives us a 50% boost for any 
fame received and any loot drops and silver received from mobs in chests. Um, and we're going to literally throw ourselves straight into it. We're going to head southwest here uh, to the next zone. So hopefully there's no gankers on the gate. As you can see here, there isn't any. So be careful, be cautious. A lot of gankers like to sit on the gates around this, uh, around these areas. So if you do see a nameplate on your screen when you're running towards a gate, uh, that's like the little red bit as you can see here. A little name, you see a little tiny name, just run the opposite way back to safety and wait it out a little bit. You don't want to risk dying just to try and get through. So be very cautious about how you play. Um, this is once again a faux loot MMORPG and people like to kill other people in the black zones. And because it's faux loot, nobody knows what you're wearing. People will still kill you just because the fact that you might have something interesting in your inventory. Who knows? Um, but once we're in this zone, we're once again going to head southwest one more time into the next zone. And then we're going to hop through to the northwest via the tunnel. And then we're going to be in the zone where we want to be in. And I'm going to start showing you guys how to make some money. So here we are, our main zone that we're going to be focusing on pretty much throughout the video. What we're going to be looking at here is you see the outline of this dungeon on the minimap. This is something that we're going to be looking for or which will make this available to anyone pretty much on any portal location. So you don't have to follow this guide step by step. All you have to look for on the world map is an area that has that same portal layout so you can open up the world map using the m button and you can zoom in onto locations and you'll be able to see um like a little fortress or a blue dungeon area and if you click on that and it comes up with the same layout as you see uh on the little pop-up that means those dungeons will have the exact same layout as the ones that i'm entering other dungeons have mobs guarding the chests. These dungeons do not. These are the only dungeons in Albion that do not have any mobs guarding them. So it's a lot easier for any new player to be able to go in there and just enjoy some free money making guides. As you will see, so as you'll see in a couple steps uh, from now, we'll be uh, entering the dungeon and getting the loot. But right now we're going to kill a couple roaming mobs. So these are the solo mobs as you can see here. And that's going to give us some fame or XP towards leveling up our armor and weapons. And as you can see, I just uh, unlocked uh, tier 3 for all the armor and weapons I'm wearing from killing one mob. And then I found myself a hidden treasure. These are located randomly throughout any zone across the whole of Albion. These are placed randomly and you can tell their random treasures as they have a little tiny glow to them and when you hover your mouse over them it gives you the attack sword symbol. Um, these give you a nice chunk of silver for any new player. As you can see I got 3400 silver plus the little uh, trinkets that you got inside. These can be sold to the marketplace as well. So the tier 4 is 1000 silver tier 5 is 5000 silver and then tier 6 is 25000 silver these can have multiple trinkets inside of them and you can legit go around and find like back to back hidden treasures across the world map as you can see i've just found two pretty much back to back and just made myself probably about 15000 silver just by finding it on the floor but we're just going to carry on here um, and kill some random mobs, level up our uh, initial starting uh, armor and weapons, and also make some silver. So what you might be wondering is why are we doing this in the black zone? So 
On Albion, there is a blue zone, a yellow zone, a red zone, and a black zone. These are different uh, scaled PvP areas. So the blue zone, you can't be attacked and by anybody, and that is the safe area. So low risk, low reward. Yellow zone is flagged PvP, but you don't lose your loot. So it's a, it's a little bit more riskier. So the risk versus reward goes up a little bit. Red is you can die and lose your gear to anybody that's flagged. So the risk is there, just but it's not always there. So it's a little bit more risky, so you get a little bit more reward. And then the black zone is full loot PvP. It doesn't tell you if there's people in the zones or not. And that means the, re the risk is extremely high. So the reward is going to be extremely high. You'll see when I pick up silver from mobs or uh, any chests that I get, there will be um, the initial silver. And then there will be an icon for the zone. So that little black square is the extra silver we got because we're in a black zone. And then the little premium icon is the extra silver we got on top of all of that, which means we got that because we have premium activated. So all in all, you get a massive boost for premium and being in a black zone, which is massive to what we're doing here. Killing random mobs um, at the start is giving us about 300 silver each time, plus a fame boost, um, which means we can level up really easily. And they're pretty easy to kill. As you can see here, I'm in only tier 2 armor and weapon, and I'm pretty much being able to drop these tier 5 mobs with ease, just kiting their abilities. So we're going to keep doing this until we unlock tier 4 weapon and armor and also we unlock um, the tier 3 adventure. You can wear tier 3 bags and capes and also ride a tier 3 riding horse which is a massive boost above a donkey. <laughs> So here we are at the front of the dungeon that I talked about earlier and we're just going to hop in. You can't go in mounted so make sure you dismount before you go in and we're going to head to the northwest here. Um, don't worry when you get knocked down by mobs you just wait out the timer and you pop back up again. So we're going to get back up here and once you get back up from getting knocked down by mobs you have a little protection timer i think it's about 20 to 30 seconds where none of the mobs aggro you or attack you so you can just run right on through all these mobs and down into the crypt of the dungeon this is where we're going to be making the most of our money throughout this video so i'm just going to speed this up a bit as it's going to take quite a while for us to kill the uh, chest here just in our tier 2 armor and weapons without any poison potions or damage boosting food so as this goes down in the background this currently has two chests in the lower floor where we currently are obviously the first location is on the north corner and then the second one is just to the south pretty much the opposite side of the uh, map here and you will see it soon enough in So as it comes to an end here, as we kill our first chest, remember we are a brand new account and we just made ourselves 48,000 silver from that one chest alone. And on top of that, we also were able to obtain a couple ruins and relics and souls of different tiers, which we can sell later on in the marketplace. So 
Another thing we see here is we're going to A out. So we left the dungeon. All you have to do is press A and it channels the, uh, the exit. If you do get attacked, um, it does cancel it. So you can't A out while getting attacked. So just keep that in mind. If you are getting chased down by another player or getting hit by a mob, you cannot leave. But the main reason we ate out is because every two and a half hours, you see the little chest icon that's on the map here to our eastern corner. These are little relic locker chests and inside of them, if you're able to get to them in time before anybody else and open them, you are rewarded with a lot of money. Um, as we ride up here, I was pretty curious about why nobody was there actually opening the chest. It's quite rare that people don't show to these as they're highly contested as they do give a lot of good loot. and. To my surprise, actually, no one no one showed up. So a brand new player like myself right now, finding one of these chests is highly rewarding. Um, as you will see in a minute, once I get to the chest, as we move in super slow motion on our donkey across the field, the chest is going to be cleared. There's no one around. There's no name tags. There's no nobody. And we're going to have this chest to ourselves. It's a channeled... Um, once again, it's a channeled ability, so you're going to have to sit there and pretty much pick the lock to the chest. Um, if you, anybody else comes up and does damage to you, it cancels the channel. But inside, we do find ourselves a lot of T6 treasure or trinkets. Toma Insights, which are 35,000 silver each at the moment. And also two bags of silver, which came to 100k in total. And right now... I have a lot of money on me for a brand new player and I do not want to die. So we're going to head back to the city to hopefully make it back alive and then sell our items onto the marketplace and see how much we're able to obtain. We made it back alive and in one piece without getting ganked, which is always nice to see. So we're going to zone back into Fort Sterling here and make our way to the marketplace and sell our goods and see how much money we made on our first run out into the Outlands. A good thing to note here is um, you can always buy your items back off the marketplace if you died. So you don't have to go around making your own items, uh, armor and weapons and your mounts, everything can be bought on the marketplace. Just keep that in mind. So here we go. We're gonna go sell all our items here. We're just gonna quick sell all these uh, trinkets pretty much uh, to the market for players buy orders for them. I'm not gonna waste time and sit around listing our own. You may want to do so to make it a little bit extra money. As you can see, the prices do jump up and down uh, compared to like an insta sell to a sell order. So keep that in mind. Um, but as you can see here, I'm just insta selling everything. See Toma Insights here. The difference was about 30k silver, but I'm just going to insta sell them for the video for 389k. Uh, same with these uh, tier 6 uh, trinkets. We're just going to insta sell them and see how much money we make. And in total on our first Outlands run, we are up to 774k silver. Remember, this account is brand new off the Toro Island and probably under about an hour old right now. And right now, I'm just going to buy myself my tier 4 gear, so we're upgrading. So we're going to get ourselves a Scholar Cow for a helmet, a Cleric Robe body uh, for the body, obviously, uh, Soldier Boots for the Wanderlust spell, a uh, Blazing Staff for the fire, and then a tier 3 cape and bag. And on top of that, a tier 3 riding horse. We're going to be pretty much fully upgraded on our gear now. Until later on when we can unlock tier 4 horses and bags and capes. And obviously going into the future, tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, tier 8 armor and weapons. So the spells we're using here is the shield on the helmet. Um, the... 
shield on the body, the wanderlust and the carry weight on the boots, and obviously the burning field on the blazing and keeping everything else as is. Um, we're also going to get ourselves some tier 4 stew, which gives us a 5% damage increase and tier 4 poison pots, so we're going to buy 10 of those as well for our next round into the Outlands. So we made it back out into our zone and as you can see I found myself another hidden treasure and we're going to pick up some extra silver and some more trinkets. But one other thing now that we've upgraded our gear we do a lot more damage and we have a lot more defensive spells. So here we have a mob camp with a chest in it. Um, it's guarded by a couple mobs so what we're going to do here is set ourselves up. Uh, the blazing is an AoE um, spell. So it's going to do a lot of damage quite quickly to these uh, mobs as you can see here I drop it on the ground followed by my Q which is another AoE spell and I drop my shield um, on it as well and I keep using my Q as it's the shortest cooldown ability. Um, I'm going to be able to kill these mobs with a pretty much ease and I'm going to get my new Destiny Adventurer so I do a little bit more damage. As you can see I made 6800 silver from the chest. And I was able to get a ruin as well. It's a little bit hit and miss on loot wise. But it's always worth killing the chests for the silver drops. As it does vary. Sometimes it's 5,000. Sometimes it's all the way up to about 15,000 silver per chest. So here we are back down in the chest area. And we're going to be doing a lot more damage. So we can kill the chest a lot quicker now. We have the poison potions. And obviously the blazing staff puts out a lot more damage. And... It's going to be a lot quicker, probably about a minute-ish compared to before when we were in our two, tier 2 gear, which was about 4 minutes. So as we bring the chest down, we're going to get ourselves another extra 45,000 silver, a bunch of ruins and relics of different tiers. And now I'm going to show you the next location of the other chest in this dungeon. So we're going to avoid the middle area as it does have mobs in it, so you're going to have to follow the route I'm taking currently. And it's just down to our south here. Um, two exits are the one where we came in, so it would be on the between the west and the north, and the other one is between the east and the south. That little uh, little exit area. And here's the other chest. So once again, we're just gonna burn this chest down and see what we get. So these chests do respawn on a 20-minute timer after they were destroyed. So keep that in mind if so if they're not there they will be there sooner or later they're going to take some time to respawn so i'm going to show you guys how to optimize your money making or your chest ratting in a bit as we do take down this chest another 42,000 silver and a bunch of runes and relics here we're going to a out the dungeon once again just by pressing a and we're going to challenge ourselves out and I'm going to show you on the world map where you want to go next. So by pulling up the world map, all you have to do is press M. And we're going to go northwest into this zone. And then southwest where you see the other uh, dungeon and relic locker area. So bouncing between these two zones will uh, mean that the chests are always pretty much going to be up. Depending if there is another chest rat in the area. So I left it in the background of me running through the next zone just to give you guys a slight idea of the way that I'm, I move around the map. Uh, sticking to the edge is always the best bet um, of any traveling. You don't want to stick to the roads too much as that's where other players are most likely going to be, other gangers and such. Um, and we're just going to make our way to the next dungeon here. As you can see the exact same layout on the outside as, as the other one which is what we're looking for. Inside it's going to be exactly the same as well same mob layout same map layout So you don't have to worry about getting lost obviously once again, you're going to get knocked down Don't worry about it. It's just going to cost you a little bit of silver when you repair when you get back to the city and Here are the chests once again I'm going to speed it up in the background. Everybody's seen that Chest get burnt down by now and nobody else really needs to see it so we're just going to speed it over until we get to the loot here as I do believe we do get uh, some extra black market loot this time around from these chests so these chests do have black market loot attached to them 
as you can see 42,000 silver and we get a tier 6 nature staff and a 7.1 soldier armor along with other ruins and relics a nice boost to our silver i'm pretty sure that soldier armor in the end sells for about 200k if i'm not mistaken so once again really good money making method we're only about maybe two hours into this account being made and we're already pretty much over 1 million silver once i sell everything we do have another chest once again to ourselves, so we're gonna go ahead and kill this one and uh, see what we get so as the chest goes down we're gonna obviously get ourselves some more silver which is always nice and sadly no extra black market loot but we did get a t8 ruin uh, and some of our radics and such so once again silver is always going to be there black market loot's not always going to be there but there is always going to be something inside the chest and whatever area i wanted to point out on uh, the map is this area here it's uh, indicated on the map as the big uh, silver uh, little chest area and as you can see here we have little urns on the map and there's also silver on the ground so these urns uh, when smashed so when you attack them and break them open they vary vary in terms of how much silver is inside sometimes there's like on the lower end which you just saw which is 317 silver each or sometimes it goes all the way up to about 600 um, and there's a lot of them around this area on the on the map so it's always worth going to and getting a little bit of extra money while you wait for chests to respawn so the big relic locker on the map here spawns every six hours i believe and inside of that if you're able to sneak one away by yourself you're probably looking in the region of about two to three million silver worth of items but um it's very rare that these go untouched other than like large scale groups that come and take them so lastly i want to touch on your adventurer challenge and solo dungeons so as you see here I'm currently outside a green portal and I'm going to click on it and it channels me inside. Be aware, uh, just because we call it a solo dungeon doesn't mean it's just you inside. It could be any other player, it could be a group of players, so just be wary of that. And what we're going to do here is just try and go ahead and clear the mobs one by one and get ourselves some extra fame. And every time you earn fame, you'll see um the little key icon and a number next to it this means that's the number that you've just gained towards your adventurer challenge and the adventurer challenge is pretty much your daily weekly and monthly uh login bonus type thing for playing the game you know like every every mmo has it and it gives you a reward for completing your daily active um bonus so you're required to earn i think it's 1200 per day of like the daily bonus thing or like the daily activity uh this could be done by gathering uh by killing mobs etc you can't get it by killing players or by crafting i believe so just keep that in mind uh solo dungeons are probably your best way to do this um it's quick it's easy and it's a good reward at the end of the day it doesn't take too long either um, and the rewards are pretty good so completing your daily challenge gives you a tome which then gives you 2000 fame towards your armor and weapons that you currently are wearing and you get that every single day after you complete your daily bonus and also um, if you're a non-premium player you complete the the challenge every day you also get i think it's 10 or 20 learning points to use so it's one other way of uh allowing players to get learning points if they're not premium but what you're going to be aiming for in these three days as a new player is optimizing your play time and completing these daily challenges so you get a bonus 50,000 points towards your monthly challenge 
or your weekly challenge and that allows you to unlock on your weekly challenge um, these chests so you need 150,000 points in total so that's three days so if you do it right um, while activating your three days of premium you can claim your chest at the end of it um, this allows you to open up a chest that gives you random loot rewards you're looking at I think it's on average about either two to 500k depending how lucky you get in terms of loot um, but still it's a nice little added bonus and obviously free silver is free silver and you're just going to be regularly playing the game it's not going to force you to do anything you don't really want to do so to speak and as you can see here I just completed it I got my Toma Insight unlocked and I'm gonna open it up and I got my 50,000 points so there it is I claim my book and I can use it here it gives me 2,000 fame and you'll also see if I open it back up again the chest that I unlock obviously 150,000 points needed and once you become a full 30 day premium member you can unlock a, a unique mount every month which they bring into the game that's pretty much it for the guide um thank you for watching um what i didn't show is a couple extra runs in that time period of me playing as you can see on the final screen here i am sitting on three hours of gameplay and 1.7 million silver with tier 4 unlocked on my account as well um, once again money is king for any new starting player so if you die you can just buy your gear back from the marketplace you don't have to worry about grinding away your resources and refining and walking around the map and trying to make everything yourself you can just go to the marketplace make it yourself and then head right back out there and carry on making money and leveling up your armor and weapons and getting ready for pvp i hope this helped you guys once again if you made it all the way to the end thank you uh smash that like button leave us a comment and make sure you subscribe and you'll be entered into a chance of winning uh one month's worth of premium every single month this video is live so if this video is up for 12 months you're going to be i'm going to be giving away one month of premium for 12 months so that's it from me thank you for watching and have fun playing albion